Okay, so the file that we just uploaded uh, in our previous lecture is this one. And if you look at the bottom right hand corner, you can see the actual size of that file is 1.6 megabytes. It's a large file and it's a large file because it's an animated GIF. Okay, now as default, the default mechanism is in PARS is to save files in your MongoDB database. So just the same way as it's saving any other piece of data, it's going to save files inside your MongoDB. DB database with something called GridFS, which is a, a built-in feature for MongoDB. Now, the big advantage of that is that we didn't have to do anything at all to our PaaS server in order to upload a file and have it served. You had to do nothing. But the big disadvantage of it is that GridFS isn't really a very cheap way to store files. Okay, if we have a look at our Heroku, instance so if I go into our Heroku dashboard um, you can see that we actually loaded in a free version of the MLab MongoDB database was so free but actually if we look to edit the plan okay you can see it just just one gigabyte costs eighteen dollars a month and eight gigabytes cost hundred and forty four dollars a month and it goes up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher now eight gigabytes in terms of pure data that's a lot of instances and that's a lot of classes, right? But if you start including in files into that mix, just that one file was 1.6 megabytes. You know, if we were trying to stuff images into a MongoDB database, it would work, but it would start costing us a lot of money. And especially if you're planning to build an image heavy site, then this solution probably isn't going to be the right solution for you. But that's okay, with just a little bit more configuration with Parse Server, we can store our image files somewhere a lot cheaper. The most common place on the internet to store images uh, is something called Amazon S3. Now, Amazon S3 is part of the Amazon Web Services stack. So Amazon Web Services is just a ton of services that you can use to implement features for your uh, for the infrastructure, I suppose, for your application. In fact, Heroku is built on AWS. So AWS is a lower level than Heroku. Okay, Heroku really just makes it much, much easier to build uh, infrastructure for your application or to manage infrastructure for your application than if you were to do it directly with AWS. But also it means that Heroku works very, very well with AWS. Now, once you log in, so if you go to the AW Amazon Web Services, which is Amazon oh, AWS, so aws.amazon.com. If you go there and you either sign into the console or create your own account, once you've logged in, you just you should see something like this. Now it can seem incredibly daunting. And it is, AWS, Amazon Web Services, is a complex thing to figure out how to use. So the, the part that we're going to work with is something called S3, which is called Scalable Storage. Think of it just like a really cheap place to store files on the internet. Much, much cheaper than storing them inside a MongoDB database. So what we need to do is we need to create what's called a bucket in S3. So you click S3. Okay, I have quite a few buckets already created. So let's create another bucket. Click to the top. Give it a name. So let's call it uh, par server example. Let's call it code craft example. Now for the region. Just use, just choose US standard. Don't choose any of these other ones. It just causes a headache. Don't care where you are in the world. Just choose US standard. And then you click create. And then on the left hand side there, you see pass server code craft example. It's created a file for you. The most important thing is when you create this bucket name, make sure it doesn't have any dot in it. Make sure it's just got uh, characters and perhaps hyphens. Okay, now you created a bucket, which is basically just a folder in which 
you want to um, store files on the internet using AWS. The next place we want to go is we want to go to the IAM section, the access management section. So if we go click back on to the, the cube, I suppose, and then look for identity and access management and click that. So in this section, what we do is we create some special login permissions just so we can authorize our PAR server to save data onto our S3 bucket and retrieve data from our S3 bucket. So once you're in the IAM dashboard, click on the users tab. Okay, click create new users and let's give it a name. So let's go cars server code craft example. You can give it whatever you want. Um, in fact, let's, let's just give it code craft. Okay. Make sure generate an access key for each user is selected. I'm just call it code craft example. And I'm going to click create. And once it's created, just click download credentials. So you will net, make sure once it, this happens, you store this file somewhere super, super safe. Let me open this file up so you can see what it is. So what this is, is for this username, it's something called an access key ID and also a secret access key ID. Think of this like the password for this user on Amazon Web Services. So we created this user and it automatically generated a password and let us download the uh, information uh, for that user once it will never ever let you see this access key ID and this secret access key ID again. So if you lose these, you lose them forever. So you must make sure you store these safe somewhere. Okay. So once that's set up, click close. And now we click on policies tab and click on getting started. Click on create policy click on create your own policy, give it a name and just just to, just so it doesn't get confusing, I'm just going to choose the same name as the username and then just copy and paste this policy document and I'm going to send you this in a link later on. The important thing is for the bucket name, you put in the bucket name that we created for our bucket. So for us it was um, pars server code craft example then again for the one underneath there make sure you keep the slash star at the end of it okay and then click validate to make sure it looks correct and if it says this policy is valid then click create policy and I know this is very very confusing but just follow the instructions step by step and everything should work fine for you. Then we go back into the users tab. We go click on our user. We click on permissions. We click on attach policy. And then we find the one that we just created, this one. Select it. And then we click attach policy. Okay, so there was quite a lot to go through. Um, I'll provide you with uh, a PDF instructions at the end of this lecture, so just so you can uh, follow through step by step. You don't have to understand fully what I did. Um, again, AWS is really complicated, but as long as you just follow through the instructions step by step, it should be enough. But in, in essence, in summary, what we did is we, was we created um, a bucket on something called Amazon S3, which is just like a, a hard drive which lets us store files and, and, and load files on, off the internet. So it's just a cheaper place for us to save files. We then also created a user account on AWS so that we can um, connect from our PAR server to AWS using that user. And then we created uh, some security credentials, which, which was like a password for that user, which we're gonna give to our PAR server just so it can uh, connect to uh, AWS on uh, using that user account. And then we just set some policies, which are just permissions for that user account to save and load data from um, Amazon S3. So that's what we have to do to set up our AWS instance. We now need to configure our PaaS server code 
to use Amazon S3 as a place to store files instead of MongoDB. So to do that, let's load up our code. Okay, here we go. There, here is our parse server code. Now, all the code that we need to implement S3 is already in this file. I've just commented it out. So if we go to the top of the file, what we need to do is we need to load the S3 adapter. So let's uncomment that file. Now the S3 adapter comes pre-built inside Parse Server, so we didn't really need to install anything extra to get it. So now if we scroll down, you can see at the bottom, there's a section called File Storage. Let's just uncomment that section. So all we've said here is to store files, we want to use the S3 adapter. And we've set something up called Direct Access to True, which really just makes sure that when we load files, we load them directly from S3 and we don't go through our own server. We don't proxy them through our own server. And that's it, that's all you need to do in terms of our source code to configure S3. But the next thing we need to do is we need to push this code to our server. So let's bring up our console. Okay, let me expand that out. Let's clear up. So again, what we need to do is we need to git add index.js, then we need to do git commit. And then I'm just gonna say why change. So um, added in S3 adapter to serve files, save that. And then again, we just need to git push Heroku master to push this code to our Heroku instance and get it to restart the server on our behalf. And so the final thing we need to do is we need to set up our Heroku instance. We need to add some more configuration variables so we can tell our past server what our credentials are for Amazon AWS. Again, we never ever want to hard code our credentials in our source code. We always, always, always want to use configuration variables in Heroku or environment variables. So let me scroll to the bottom. So, so there's a couple of configuration variables we need to set up. The first one is the buckets. We need to tell it which bucket we want to use. So we call the bucket parse server code craft example. Okay. The next thing I want to, to tell it is our access key. Okay, so let's bring that up. So our access key was this one. We paste that. And the final three, final, final thing we need to set up is the S3 secret key. Again, copy paste that and hit add. And in fact, all of this information that I'm showing you is actually available on the PARS server wiki in configuring your S3 adapter. I'll add these as links to the course so you can quickly get access to them. But again, I just followed the, through the instructions to set up your bucket on Amazon S3. And I'm just setting up some of these environment variables that um, are already in the documentation there. But trust me, me taking you through this step by step is far easier than you are trying to figure out by going through this documentation. I struggled for a bit myself, so I, I definitely have cleaned this up a lot for you. So once everything has been pushed to Heroku and Heroku has restarted, go back into the JS bin that we were working with before. And let's just try uploading an, a, a file again. So I'm going to run with JS, choose a file, Let's pick our old funny little GIF here, hit load. And just like before, we've uploaded our file again. But if I just expanded out the console there, so you can see that this URL is actually now being hosted by Amazon AWS and specifically the S3 service. So the domain is going to be s3.amazonaws.com. The little 
subdomain before that is actually the name of our bucket. So our bucket that we created was parse server code craft example. So whatever bucket name you create, that will be the first part of the domain. Then it'll be dot, then it'll be S3, then it'll be Amazon AWS.com. And the final part of it is the same as we had previously when we uploaded with pars, it's just some unique string that pars created plus the name of our file. So again, just like if the file was being served from pars, you can just take that image file, the URL, and just paste it in the browser. And it's just gonna load up like before, but this time we are serving our files from Amazon, from the S3 service on Amazon AWS, which is much, much, much cheaper than uh, storing the files in MongoDB. And as you can see, it doesn't really take a lot of effort to set up. I mean, it's a lot of configuration, but running through all of these steps I've provided might take you 20, 30 minutes. That's about it. Not a lot of time considering how much money you could save.